Hello, my courageous creators, and welcome to my creativity corner. My name is Claire, and I'm very excited to teach you some art exploration. So today, we're going to be doing landscape painting, but we're not going to be using paint to paint these landscapes. Instead, we're going to be using eggs. Here's my version of landscaping with egg tempera paint. But first, we have to put on our art clothes. All right, I'm ready to get messy. All right. Now that I have all my materials that I need to begin my project, I have to make the first important artistic decision. And that is, what way do I want my paper? Do I want my landscape painting to be nice and wide? Or do I want it to be nice and tall? Now, this orientation is called portrait style, when our paper is nice and tall. When our paper is nice and wide, it's called landscape. But even though I'm doing landscape paintings today, if I want to, I can totally do my painting nice and tall. So this is your artistic decision. I think because I did my demonstration nice and tall before, I'm going to try to do it nice and wide this time. Now, I'm going to make sure that I have a nice surface I can work with that's flat and that I can tape down my paper for the duration of this project. So you may want to work on a big piece of cardboard or if you have a table that you can tape your work down to and keep while you're painting, that's great. The reason why I'm taping down the edges of my paper is because when I take the tape off at the very, very end, I'm going to have this really nice border around my painting that will make it look really professional. And if I want to frame it later, it will be really easy to frame. I'm being really careful about lining up my edges because I want them to be very clean, very straight. And voila! Now I'm ready to start drawing. Okay, so now that we have our paper all taped up, I want to talk to you a little bit about landscape for a second. So, landscape paintings are broken up into three sections. The background, which is at the top of the page, the midground, which is in the middle of the page, and the foreground, which is at the very bottom of the page. Everything that is up in the top part of our page is usually very, 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 very far away. It may take us weeks to get there if we were walking on foot. Everything in the midground of our page is maybe a day's walk away. You know, maybe it's a really nice hike. And everything that's in the foreground of our page is something that we can reach out and touch right then and there. Now, because we have these different areas, they also mean that there are different distances. However, when we're drawing those distances, we use this very special technique with perspective and scale. I would like to take a moment to demonstrate what that looks like. You don't have to draw this on your page. I'm gonna take a quarter, it's a nice round quarter, and if I put this way up in the top part of my page, I'm going to draw a nice bold line so you can see it. It's going to look like it's very far away by the time that I'm done with drawing out all my different layers um, to create depth within my page. Let's take that same quarter and put it at the very bottom of the page. Again, making it nice and dark so you guys can see it. Lovely. Now because this circle is now at the bottom of the page, it's in the foreground. It's something that I can reach out and touch. So it's going to look like it's much, much closer than the circle that's at the top of my page. 
let's play around with the idea for a little while. So I'm going to begin drawing objects in my background and then move all the way down to my foreground. Now I'm going to be pressing my pencil pretty hard to get some nice dark lines so that you can see it in this video, but I encourage you to draw pretty light just in case if you want to make different lines or experiment with different ways to draw. So I really love mountains. I love going hiking, going on nice walks, and I think my mountains, I'm going to make them kind of like jaggedy, you know, maybe there's some really interesting lookout points, kind of wavy looking, and I'm going to put like maybe a smaller one down here, where well, I'm really enjoying the texture and the funkiness of these lines. Maybe there's a taller one over here, and maybe it kind of extends out a bit. These mountains are really far away. Remember, it would take us weeks to get there on foot if we were to walk all the way to them. So this is going to be in my background. Now I'm going to think about some things I could put in my midground area. So I think for my midground, I would like to put a waterfall in my midground. So maybe this waterfall is coming out of the side here. Maybe it's a nice sort of swooping line. Whoosh! Very, very fun. And I have some water just shooting down from it. I think that'd be a really fun place to go swimming. And then maybe there's this sort of little island that comes off over here in the middle of the waterfall. A little jaggedy. Maybe there are going to be some trees over there. Now you're going to notice that I'm not drawing little details yet in my painting. I'm just drawing the big objects. We're going to put in details later. So I think I kind of need something over here too. My waterfall looks like it's pretty tall up there. Maybe over here I'm going to have a tree line coming in at an angle and I'm going to have it cut back over here, maybe at the base of the mountains. That's pretty cool. I'm starting to get some depth in there. One thing I really like about drawing strong diagonals through my paintings is that it takes the viewer's eye from the foreground into the background. So it's like we're going from this corner area straight into the mountains. So that's pretty exciting. All right, so now that I have my background complete, I've got some things in my midground. I'm gonna think about what I wanna put in my foreground, the thing that I can reach out and touch. Maybe I'm actually like standing in this spot. And I think because I have this circle down here already, I kinda of wanna put some really big rocks. Maybe I'll kinda of make this again another like jaggedy line. And maybe this is like a lookout point. You know, maybe I'm looking at this beautiful vista. Or maybe I'm gonna go like, you know, diving into the, the waterfall at the base of this beautiful swimming area. I kinda of like that. Get these big rocks going on there. Beautiful. All right, and I think over here, just to kind of like let myself know, you know, again, I'm thinking about putting some water in this area because of the waterfall coming down here. I want to let my, myself know where the mountains are going to end. And I think I want these mountains, because I have the tree line up here too, maybe they kind of end around here. Maybe they meet the tree line. Beautiful. This is the color wheel. Color wheels are really great tools for artists because they help us figure out the relationship between colors. The color red, blue, and yellow are called primary colors, and with those three colors we can make every other color. For example, we can make purple by mixing red and blue, we can make green by mixing blue and yellow, and we can make orange by mixing yellow and red. We can make brown by mixing colors across the color wheel from each other. For example, if I want to make brown, I could mix blue 
and orange together. Or I can mix red and green together. Or I can mix purple and yellow together. Beautiful. Now we are ready to paint. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of my brushes. Now my brushes are very, very tiny. If you have larger brushes you would like to work with, I encourage you to do so. I'm going to go ahead and put my yellow, my blue, and my red on my paint palette. Now I'm using my left hand just so you can uh, see a little bit better so I'm not crossing over the whole image. Cleaning my paintbrush. Now this part is very important. We're going to clean and then we're going to dry it. And the reason why we do that is because we don't want these three wells of paint where we get our purest colors to mix into each other. Instead, we want to do all our mixing on our paint palette. So that's why I'm taking these small amounts of paint and putting them over onto my paint palette and being very careful doing so. It's amazing with this paint, you only need a really small amount to cover a large area. I'm cleaning my paintbrush, drawing it off. Oh, I noticed that that came out kind of blue. It looks like I have to clean a little bit more. Fantastic. Now I'm going to take my red and I'm going to put it over on this part of the plate. Beautiful. So now it's really exciting because we get to make some very fun artistic decisions. So I drew this mountainous landscape that has waterfalls, has tree lines, has fun rocks, and I think that I want, I have this circle up here too, and instead of making that the sun, I think I'm actually going to make that into the moon, and maybe I am way up north, maybe I'm close to the Arctic Circle in Alaska, and I am looking at the beautiful night sky, and maybe I can see the northern lights, those beautiful, beautiful greens that just light up the sky, they're like ribbons, so gorgeous. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do this thing called color blocking. Color blocking, it's almost like we're using our drawing as if it's a coloring book and we are just painting these nice solid colors all around the lines that we drew. The reason why we color block when we paint is because we want to put a nice layer everywhere first, to get all of those white spots covered, before we then go in and add beautiful details and textures. Looks like I'm running out of blue paint on my palette. I guess I gotta take a little bit more, put it over here. And maybe I want to bring out some of that green that I was talking about. So I'm going to clean my brush, dry it off, and I'm going to take some yellow. Now what I like to do when I mix colors is I like to take the lighter color first and then mix in the darker color because usually the darker color you need a lot less of it to make your new color. If I take a whole bunch of blue and add just a tiny bit of yellow, it's probably going to stay mostly blue. But if I take a lot of yellow, that tiny bit of blue, look at this. Look at this beautiful green color. Isn't that lovely? I get that little area right there. I kind of want to blend this in a little bit too. So maybe I'm going to be adding some greens over here. That, that green night sky. It's almost like looking at the ocean, but it's above. And that's pretty cool. I'm going to put a little bit over there. Beautiful. Maybe it's lighter by the moon because the moon is giving off so much 
light. You know, so it's darker way over here. I'm just kind of experimenting as I go along. I like to make little discoveries while I'm working and just really see where my material takes me. Sometimes it's kind of on a journey. I have to make a little bit more green too. So again, I'm going to take my yellow. Clean my brush. Get nice and dry and add a tiny bit of blue into that. Lovely. Beautiful. So now I've color blocked the very, very furthest area, the night sky. I'm gonna experiment with color blocking my mountain range too. So let me think, what color do I want my mountains to be? I think because I mixed blue and yellow already to make green, I wanna experiment with making some purple mountains. So I'm gonna go ahead and take some red Remember mixing with my lighter color first. Because this is a big area, I think I'm going to bring even more red onto my palette. And I'm going to mix some blue into that area. But first I have to clean my brush and then dry it off. Paper towels getting all these really beautiful colors too. And I'm going to start by taking a really small amount of blue and mixing that in to see what I get. Oh, I like that purple. That is really lovely. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and color block this beautiful mountain range. I wonder what this mountain range is called. Hmm, I have to think of a really fun name. Maybe it's like the path to the northern lights. You know, maybe it's really, really tall. Maybe this is the tallest mountain range in the Arctic. Maybe we have some creatures that live up there too. Maybe they're Arctic foxes. Maybe some Arctic hares. It is totally up to you. This is an area for your imagination to really explore. So now I want to give you the opportunity to color block your painting. So remember you're going to treat it just like a coloring book and you're going to paint all the way down one nice layer. And while you do that, I'm going to do that as well and then we're going to meet up for the next step. All right, so now we've finished all of our color blocking. It's time to add some definition into our landscape painting by adding values, details, and textures. So let's begin with some values. I'm gonna take my paintbrush, nice and dry. Now values are figuring out where the lights and the darks of each of our elements in our landscape painting are. So I am going to look at my mountains first to figure out where is the light from the moon hitting the mountain and where is the light not hitting the mountain. So I think the darker areas are probably going to be over here. So I'm going to mix together some blue. Bring that over here a little bit. And some red to make that purple color again. Oops, okay, get all that blue off. It's a little bit better. I'll take some red in there. And I'm going to get a nice deep purple color. I'm gonna go ahead and generously dab that deep purple color on this side of the mountain, and maybe I'll spread that in a little bit. Those nice dark areas. And maybe it kind of comes in here a little bit, you know? 
maybe there are some uneven areas. I'm going to make that a little deeper blue too. Kind of experiment. Maybe I'll add a little bit more red. Beautiful. So now I'm beginning to get some different colors in those mountains. And I'm going to mix some more purple. I'm going to get this area down here too. Just kind of being really fluid with my paintbrush. I'm just kind of experimenting to see what happens when I add these darker areas in. I kind of like this red area on top. Maybe that's like a different type of rock that's up there. It's kind of exciting. Maybe over here, get some shadows going down here, begin to add some exciting definition. Sometimes I'm noticing that the, air, the uh, paint rather goes on a little thin. So I like to kind of blob in a little bit more paint. I actually like this texture that I'm coming up with too. That's pretty interesting, playing around with that. Again, just being like nice and loose, really seeing like where the materials take me. Making sure I'm still leaving some light areas to again get that nice definition. Get those really lovely values in there. Mixing some more purple. Making sure I'm always cleaning my brush when I change colors and making sure it's nice and clean. Maybe there's like a little, maybe there's a valley in the mountain right here. There's some darker areas down here. It's kind of fun to experiment with. I really like how over here, my purple is like a little bit more red and over here it's a little bit more blue. That's kind of a really interesting color change that's happening. All right, maybe I'll add a little bit. All right, now I'm gonna experiment a little bit with textures now, and I'm gonna use this sponge. I cut a little piece off of a sponge, and I noticed that it made really fun textures when I used it with paint. So I think I'm gonna experiment with the textures in my tree line area, maybe get some really fluffy trees, and maybe thinking about where the water is coming down, um, maybe there's a nice little mist coming off of it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to make some green so I'm going to take my yellow, find a nice open space on my palette, clean my brush, and take a little bit of blue. Maybe first I'll do a lighter green, um, and then I'll do a darker green. Maybe I'll just experiment a little. Now, I really want there to be some contrast, so I'm gonna put that down there. Yeah, that, that's got some contrast. Contrast is when two things are really different from each other, so we can see those differences. And I am going to, this, this sponge is a little stiff, so I'm gonna get some water on it, just a tiny bit. I don't want it to be too watery. And I'm gonna dab my sponge into that. I'm just going to go ahead and experiment. Hmm, that looks to me like it's a little too light, so I'm actually going to make some more green. And I'm going to put some more blue in it to make it a little bit darker. Take yellow. In my brush. Take a little bit more blue. See what we can get this time. That looks like that's pretty dark. 
let's go ahead and take our sponge. Get a good amount on there. Let's see. That's coming up a little bit better. I wonder though, what if we were to really go all out? What if we were to take this sponge, put it direct in the blue, get really, really dark, and lightly dab. Oh, that's cool. I like that because I can still see some green through that. I like it too because I really enjoy experimenting. Look at these trees go a little bit into the mountain. I don't want to put too much in because I don't want to turn completely blue. And then you know it would be really interesting too. So now i got those dark areas. What if I also had some light areas? So I'm going to clean my sponge. Still got some blue on it. I want to get it dry because I have a feeling that if there's too much water on the sponge, it's all going to kind of blend together. So I'm going to place this in the yellow. Why don't I just kind of put little yellowy areas in there? Oh, that's kind of fun. Look, it's like I made green directly on my paper. Oh, I like that. I'll put that up there in the mountains a little bit too. I'm going to put that down by the water. That's a really fun texture to experiment with. Let's go now and play with the texture of the mist coming off the wall ball. So I'm cleaning off my sponge, getting it nice and dry. Now I'm thinking that I should do kind of like what I did with this one. Start with that deep blue because this color here, this lighter blue, Again, it's pretty light, so I want to get some nice contrast going in there. So maybe there's like, maybe there's mist coming onto these rocks over here. Oh, that's pretty mystical. I like that. I like that quite a bit. So I've explored values, again, looking to see where like the shadowy areas are on my objects. I've explored with um, textures a little bit using my sponge. We can definitely use our paint brushes to make textures as well. For example, I have paint brushes that are round, like this one. I also have paint brushes that are flat, like this one. So maybe with my flat paint brush, I have some little kind of vegetation, some plants going on by the edge of the water so I can kind of blob my paint that way. And see, it makes the same shape as the paintbrush, which is pretty cool, pretty exciting. And then finally, I want to explore details. So details, I'm actually going to take a smaller paintbrush. I'm going to take this really, really little one that I have. And details, I'm only going to be seeing my details in my foreground. So I'm going to only see details in this rock area. And maybe these rocks have some really interesting lines in them. So I'm going to take this blue. Maybe they're kind of jaggedy. I kind of like that. That kind of looks like a starfish. Maybe it's a little creature that's on the rock. I really like the blue because it shows up against this purpley red color really well. I wonder what happens if we put red on the purple red. I wonder if that's going to be enough contrast. I'm not sure. Let's experiment. Ooh, that looks kind of juicy. I like that. Adding those little lines. Maybe these are salamanders. I've never seen or heard of salamanders up in Alaska. But maybe in my Alaska there are salamanders. Very, very fun. All right, so I'm going to then go ahead and explore values and textures and details throughout the rest of my painting. But now it's your turn to try throughout yours. Go ahead and have some fun exploring.
Well, my creatives creators, thanks for joining me on this project. And remember, stay creatively curious. Thanks for making art with me. And join me next time at Class Creativity Corner.